I'd like to measure the horsepower of this F-150 4.6 liter V8. I've back probed the TPS, got an oscilloscope under there. Not just any oscilloscope, it's the HS402 Wi-Fi that we build here on the channel. Nice not to have any wires, right? Things are going to happen really fast, I'm going to give you guys a heads up. We're going to find a level stretch of road. I'm going to go 0 to 100. Those are kilometers per hour, guys. When we reach 100 kilometers an hour, I'm going to release the throttle. And I'm going to immediately put the vehicle in neutral and let it coast. When it coasts down to 70 kilometers an hour, I'm going to goose the engine like that in neutral to put a marker. When we reach 40 kilometers an hour, I'm going to give it another marker. And when we slow down to a crawl, I'll give it a final marker. So let's go find a flat, straight stretch of road with nobody up our ass. This should do. Record. neutral coasting. Down to 80. Down to 70. I'll make it 70. I gave it a I gave it a boost there. I'll give it another goose at 40. There's still nobody behind us. Here's 40. Still nobody behind us. bring this down to a crawl. Probably won't go all the way down to zero. There's a bit of a downhill here. Let's call this a stop. I'm good with that. Stop our capture. Save it. Let's go home. Here's the throttle position sensor waveform that we captured. The moment that I gunned it, wide open throttle until I hit 100 kilometers an hour. Release the throttle. In neutral, coasting. At 70 kilometers an hour, I goosed it. At 40 kilometers an hour, goosed it again. And when we were at a crawl, I put another marker. And we can place vertical cursors and accurately measure the duration of the wide open throttle as we were accelerating to 100 kilometers an hour. And that time is exactly 11 seconds. And knowing the change of velocity, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, and the time that it was done in, 11 seconds, we can calculate the acceleration in meters per second squared. That truck with the cap, half a tank of gas, and little old me in it, weighs exactly 5,000 pounds. So knowing the weight and the acceleration, we can derive what the force is in Newtons. Knowing the acceleration, the initial velocity, which was zero kilometers an hour, and the time that it was done in, the distance can be figured out. We did this in 153 meters. Horsepower is simply force times distance over time. 
and we came out to 107 horsepower. That's what it took to accelerate that 5,000 pound bucket of rust to 100 kilometers an hour in 11 seconds. But that wasn't done in a vacuum. There's rolling friction and wind that the small V8 had to overcome. And we needed to be able to calculate what the horsepower requirements was to overcome the rolling friction and the wind resistance. Which is why we decelerated in neutral and that resistance would not be linear. There would be a lot more at 100 kilometers an hour than there would be at 40 kilometers an hour. Which is why the deceleration times were measured in three segments. I've created this spreadsheet which I share in the description box that has room for only five entries, that green area. We enter the weight of the vehicle and the four lap times in seconds. The spreadsheet does the remainder of the work. So you'll recall that going from zero to 100 kilometers per hour required 107 horsepower. The segment between 70 and 100 kilometers an hour, that required 42 horsepower. Between 70 and 40 kilometers an hour would have required 18 horsepower, as did the 40 to 0 segment, 18 horsepower. Total horsepower is the sum of all those four. And we came out to 185 horsepower. Remember this number. So here are the manufacturer specs for that 4.6 liter Triton engine 2002 model year. 231 horsepower. But that's at the crank. And the rule of thumb is if you were to dyno this at the rear wheel with a 4x4 automatic transmission is a 20% reduction. 231 minus 20% is 185. It does not get any sweeter than this. Another win for the Gadgets playlist. Share it on your forums. Talk to you soon.